Almighty God will send help to you from heaven. I discovered that I could not see a gate. On that holy communion, I poured in it wine into my eye. I am here tonight. Anyone trying to transfer with God's blessing upon your life shall be frustrated. Thank you for this great congregation. Thank you for what you've done for 35 years. Thank you for what you are about to begin to do. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Our Father and our God, we pray that this day, everyone here, everyone connected with this commission one way or the other, will receive a fresh touch from you. Yeah. That kind of touch that will bring about a major turnaround for the better. Yeah. Give to them all in Jesus' name. Yeah. Please, every prayer prayed in this commission today Answered by fire. <laughs> we are praying, Lord God Almighty, that the breakthroughs your children have been waiting for, they will all receive today. <laughs> Daddy, I pray that anyone connected with this commission who have been trusting you for one thing or the other before the sun sets today. <laughs> Let them sing a new song. <laughs> my Father, my God, in a moment, your children will be joining me in praying for the set man of this commission. Even that prayer, answer it before the sun sets. Yeah. Let it be well with all of us. Yeah. And let your name forever be glorified. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And let someone shout hallelujah. Well, be before we proceed further, uh, may I respectfully ask the Lord Bishop <laughs> and his wife to step forward. <laughs> and if the, if the children are around, let them come quickly. Okay. Please. Will you please stretch your hands 
towards this great family and just wish them whatever you wish yourself. If you want to succeed, wish them even greater success. If you want to know joy, wish them joy. If you want to know peace, wish them peace. Just wish them whatever you wish yourself. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so, oh my Father and my God, even as you did 35 years ago, lay your mighty hands on your children. Yeah. Pour fresh oil on them. Yeah. Give them a new beginning of joy. A new beginning of success. Yeah. A new beginning of power. Yeah. A new beginning of miracles. Yeah. A new beginning of signs and wonders. Yeah. A new beginning of mighty testimonies. Yeah. My Father, my God, when we return in five years' time for another celebration, let us look back and see that we've done more in five years than in 35. Yeah. And Father, bless every member of the family. Yeah. Prosper them mightily. Yeah. Grant all their requests. Yeah. Let their joy overflow. Yeah. Draw this family close to yourself. Move them from glory to glory. Yeah. And Lord, let them love you more. Yeah. Let them serve you better. Yeah. Let them know you more. Yeah. And together we pray that in your kingdom, we'll be there to reign with you. Yeah. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> God bless you. Well, you may shake hands with two or three people and say, the Almighty God will bless you mightily today. And then you may please be seated. God bless you. I'm thrilled by what I see. I, I, I give God all the glory. I remember what things were like when we started some 35 years ago. I even remember the way things were when we came for the 25th anniversary. We had only one service, and so we could take all the time we wanted. But now I, <laughs> I know sermons must be short. <laughs> In order to accommodate those who are yet to come, Glory be to God. And I thank God that this time around, we are not just talking to the people here, we are talking to the world. Thank you, Jesus Christ. But uh, 
I must confess, it's a very difficult thing to ask a pastor to come and preach <laughs> after an apostle like uh, Kenneth Copeland has uh, spoken. I'm very happy that he's not here. He has gone away. <laughs> Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Romans 8, verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. More than conquerors. There are three categories of people in the world. Category one, those who are less than conquerors. Category two, those who are conquerors. Category three, those who are more than conquerors. As for those who are less than conquerors, they are the people who had fought and lost. They are defeated ones. And you'll find an example in Joshua chapter 7, verse 1 to 6. Joshua 7, 1 to 6. The children of Israel invaded a little town called Ai, and the people of Ai came and trashed them. Now, usually those who fought and lost are those who relied on their own strength in the battle of life. And I'm sure you know by now that life is war. From the day you are born, to the day you die, there's always one battle after the other. If you don't believe me that the battle started even before you were born, ask your mother. She will tell you all she went through before you came out. And uh, she will tell you the pain she underwent when pushing you out. And because life is war, that is why the moment you landed here, the first thing you do is cry. You don't laugh. And because you know, <laughs> here we come. And some people want to fight this war using their own flesh, using their own abilities, their own connections, and they seem to forget that God said in Jeremiah 17, verse 5 to 6, Jeremiah 17, 5 to 6, that if you put your trust in human beings, you are under a curse. Because human beings, we fail you. However, if at any stage they turn to God, if at any stage they come down from their lofty horses and they surrender to God, God can turn defeat to victory. I'm believing God for those of you who have fought battles and have lost, that in the name that's above every other name, your victory will begin today. Yeah. I don't have a long time, so, so I won't tell you too many stories, but just to let you know what God can do when you turn the battle over to him, i give you just one illustration. A lady came to us and said, I need help. What's the problem? Her husband left her with four children and moved in with a woman with five children. And all the five children belong to five different men. And 
the lady said, I fought. I used every method a woman can use to keep my husband, but I lost. Now I want God to help me. I said, simple. Now that we've handed the matter over to God, uh, victory will come. I said, we will pray, and your husband will come to beg. She said, no, 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 no. I'm not asking him to come and beg me. I will beg him. <laughs> I said, we have handed the matter over to the Almighty. Let's see what he will do. Some days later, because we prayed a prayer that God will start a quarrel, and I believe God is asking me to tell this story because there's someone here in a similar situation. I said, God will start a quarrel between your husband and the intruder. A quarrel that nobody will be able to solve. <laughs> and the amen shows me that I'm, <laughs> I'm on target. Few minutes, a few days later, the quarrel started. And the strange woman said to the man, he said, don't you know your head is not correct? <laughs> if your head is correct, how can you leave your wife with four children to come and stay with a woman with five children and none of the five is yours? The man said, that is true, you know. <laughs> he, he, he said there must be something wrong with his head. So he packed his load, went back to the wife, when he knocked at the door and the wife opened the door, he prostrated and said, please just take me by the wife, say you are welcome. I decree today that all your defeats shall be turned to victory. Now the second category of people are the conquerors. They are the people who have fought and won. And that's why we call them winners. They are conquerors. And usually, these conquerors or winners are people who fought and won because God fought for them. For example, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, from verse 34 to 37, 1 Samuel 17, 34 to 37, David was speaking and he said, a lion came, I fought him, I killed him. A bear came, I fought him, I killed him. And this Goliath too will be like one of them. But he made a statement, he said, the God that delivered me from the jaws of the lion and the jaws of the bear, he will deliver me from this Goliath. Winners are those for whom God, uh, or with whom God had been fighting. They fought and God was with them. It is interesting that one of the original winners was called David. And that's why you find several winners going by the name David. Those who, <laughs> you have David Oyedepo, you have David uh, Abioye, you have David Junior. It's not by accident. God knows what he's doing. It will interest you to know that way back in 1950, when I took part in the first drama group in the primary school, I played the role of David versus Goliath. <laughs> Some people even thought that they should begin to call me Enoch David. <laughs> When God wanted to send Moses against Pharaoh, he said, I will be with you. When he wanted to replace him with Joshua, 
He said, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. When David was going to go against Goliath, King Saul said, go and the Lord be with you. Winners are those who have God with them. So when they go to battle, God goes there to fight with them. I pray this morning that God will never leave you alone. Yeah. Winners are mountain movers. They are people of faith. Whenever they find themselves facing a mountain, like it is written in Mark 11, verse 22 to 23, Mark 11, 22 to 23, you, they, they have the faith of God, so they speak to mountains, and the mountains move. I'm believing God for you today that every mountain in your life will move. Yeah. Uh, one child of God reported to us that the boss in the place of work said that he would not be promoted unless he joined their secret society. And the young man said, I don't know what to do. There's no way I can join that secret society. So it looks as if my promotion is uh, already over. I said, what are you talking about? Aren't you a child of God? He said, yes. Let's move the mountain. We just pray a simple prayer. Mountain, move. Uh, and the way God did it, they transferred the boss, they promoted my son, and then brought the boss back. And by the time he arrived, is at the same level with my son. I say it one more time. Every mountain in your life will move today. But then, where I'm going is category three. Those who are more than conquerors. Up to now, you have been winners. You will need to move now to the next level. We need to move to the level of those who win without a fight. Those who are more than conquerors are not those who fought and won because God was fighting with them. Those who are more than conquerors are those who win because God fought their battles for them. They, they don't have to fight. I mean, in Exodus 14, you know the story very well. You can read the story from verse 13 to 28. Exodus 14, 13 to 28. When the children of Israel looked back and they saw the army of Pharaoh coming after them, Oh, the Bible said they were so afraid, so afraid that they were practically torn to pieces. Why? They've been slaves for more than 400 years. They've just had their deliverance, and they've, they've never learned to war because you don't teach your slaves to fight. And then they saw the greatest army coming after them. They knew that they had no weapons to face this army and it looks as if they'll be going back into bondage. They were so afraid. But then Moses made a pronouncement. He said, you won't, there's no need for you to be afraid. All you need to do is just stand still. And the Lord will then fight for you. He said, the enemy you see today, you will never see them again. Now, I'm not claiming to be Moses. But I'm a representative of the Mosa. <laughs> and the God of Moses has not changed. And I am declaring today that every enemy you have seen to this moment, 
you will never see them again. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and when you get to read the whole chapter, it makes very beautiful reading. 2 Chronicles 20, the whole chapter. We find some three mighty kings coming against a very small kingdom. And the king happened to belong to God. So he ran to God, what do I do? God said nothing, just keep on praising me. I take care of the situation. You know the story. It, it was a choir that won the battle. They were singing, and the enemy began to beat up themselves until there was not one of them left. As a matter of fact, at the end of the day, the fellow they thought they were going to swallow spent three days carrying in the spoil. You see, when you get home, I want you to read Isaiah 41 from verse 10 to 13. Isaiah 41, 10 to 13. You will see the promise of the Almighty God there for you. He said, I will help you. I will hold your right hand and I say, I will help you. He said, all those who are incensed against you will be as nothing. You will search for them, you won't even find them. Let me tell you a story. I will soon be closing. I'm, I'm watching the clock. <laughs> we wanted to dedicate a church in one nation of the world. I won't mention the name because the whole world is listening. As in one of these powerful nations of the world. My children have built a very beautiful edifice. They've asked me, when will you be around to dedicate? I've given them a date. And then they made the announcement, you know, they began to advertise. And a senator, one of the powerful men in the area, heard about it and wrote to them and said, over my dead body will you dedicate this church? So my children contacted me, Daddy, what do we do? Do we postpone the date of the dedication? Some people are suggesting that we go to court. Some people are doing this. Or maybe if we postpone it next year, we will have time to fast and pray. I smiled. You see, when the battle is too big for you, you don't need to fight. You just relax. Let God do the fighting. I told my children, I said, the date remains. What are we going to do? Nothing. Just keep on praising God. Well, a week before the day of dedication, big senator was getting dressed to go and get a permanent injunction against us so that the church would never open. And as he was getting dressed, he had already put the left, left leg on the left side of the trouser. And for one funny reason or the other, he puts the right leg also in the same something. <laughs> and while he was struggling to free himself, he fell, knocked his head against something. By the time they took him to the hospital, he was dead. Somebody said, Pastor, you mean you killed him? I said, no, I, I mean. <laughs> he said over, he's dead. <laughs> and so I'm decreeing this morning. All those who say you will not reach your goal. You will attend their funerals. <laughs> now let me close. <laughs> who are these people who are more than 
conquerors. What, what, what's their qualification? Because, like I, I've been telling my children for quite a while now, if we summarize all the teachings of Jesus Christ, it can be put in a single sentence. And that is, nothing goes for nothing. Nothing goes for nothing. That's the summary. Oh, but sir, salvation is free. Oh, <laughs> because somebody paid for it. After that one, every other thing, you have your own part to play. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. It is those that he loves that are more than conquerors. Who are those that he loves? Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. Proverbs 8, verse 17, he said, I love those who love me. Love is reciprocal. You don't love me, forget it. That's what he said. John 15, verse 14. John 15, verse 14. Jesus Christ said, You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. You don't obey me and you say I am your friend. He said, You are wasting your time. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. The word of God is clear. Deuteronomy chapter 28. You can read it from verse 1 to 7. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 to 7. He said, if you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do all the commandments which I command you this day, he said, then these following blessings will begin to come upon you. If you jump there to verse 7, he said, then when the enemies come against you one way, the enemies that come against you will be smitten before your face. In other words, you won't have to do the smiting. They are coming, and God will be the, will be the one who will be fighting for you, not with you now. He said, then they will come one way and they will flee seven ways because they will suddenly discover you are not the one fighting. But you must hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do all his commandments. The Bible made it abundantly clear. Until you submit yourself to God, you can't resist the devil and expect him to flee. Submission must come before victory. So if you are here, you've been singing with us, dancing with us, shouting with us, but you are not obeying all his commandments, not some. You can't be more than conquerors. Or you are here, and you have not even surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. You are still saying, my life is my life. I can live it the way I want. No problem. The devil will like you very much. Because he knows that you are the only one he has to deal with. And if he has to deal with you alone, <laughs> he will do a thorough job. I don't know whether I've told you here before. My father said that when the lion wakes up in the morning, he prays one prayer. God, show me the animal I will eat today and leave the two of us alone. Don't help me, don't help him, just show me the animal and say, okay, lion, there goes. If the devil ever prays, I know he won't, but if he ever prays, he will say, God, show me that fellow that I will devour today and leave us alone. You can't fight the devil on your own. So if you are here this morning and you have not yet given your life to Jesus Christ, in the two, three minutes I have left, I want to give you an invitation. Come quickly, come and stand before me so I can pray for your salvation. If you really want to surrender your life to Jesus, you do, I'm not talking about, uh, I, I, I'm coming to a church, I'm, no, 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 I mean total surrender of your life to him in salvation. 
It might be two or three of you. And so I will count from one to seven. Before I say seven, if you are one of them, come here quickly. And I'll pray for your salvation. I'm counting now one. I mean total surrender. From now on, Jesus Christ, your word will be my command. I will do everything that you command me to do. Everything. Everything. I will love you. I will serve you. I will pray. I will witness. I will win souls. I will win souls. I will live holy. I will pay my tithes. I will give my offering cheerfully. I will do the work of God. Total surrender. Total and absolute surrender to him. As a sign to him that you love him. Two. Three. Yeah, I can see those of you from outside. You will have to move very fast. Four. Thank you, Father. Five. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Hurry up. Thank you, those of you who are clapping for them. Your, your hands will never be empty. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to your holy name. Glory be to your holy name. Six. Ah, all right, all of you are already in front, and those of you who are already coming, talk to the Lord for just 30 seconds. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. Save my soul. I'm surrendering to you completely. From now on, you are my Lord. From now on, you are my Savior. I will serve you all the days of my life. And the rest of us, please, let us pray for these people. Let's stretch our hands towards them and ask that the Almighty God will have mercy on them that the one who saved our souls will save their own souls also. Please intercede for all of them. Pray that God will give them a new beginning, a new beginning in the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray for their salvation. Intercede for them for another 30 seconds. Pray that this day will mark a new beginning in their lives, a new beginning of joy, of peace. In, in Jesus Christ, of total surrender to the Almighty God. Thank you, Father. Those of you who are on the way, just keep coming, keep coming. Make sure you get there before I finish praying. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Savior of mankind, I want to thank you for your word. I want to bless your holy name for these people who have come forward to surrender their life to you. You promised, Lord, that whosoever will come unto you, you will no wise cast out. Now that they have come, please receive them. Amen. Save their souls. Amen. Forgive all their sins. Amen. Give them a brand new beginning. Amen. Write their names in the book of life. Amen. And from now on, any time they call on you, please answer them by fire. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. You're watching Redemption Way.